Hello there. I did a consultation recently with a young couple who were interested in buy-to-let investments. In other words, they were interested in buying a residential property, a house or apartment and letting it. And in this way, as many people have a sort of a dream or an ambition of building up a chain or a group or a collection of buy-to-let investments. The idea is that the rental income of the first one will go a long way towards paying the mortgage and the rise then in value over a period of time, a year, two years, three years, five years or whatever, will ensure capital appreciation for the value of the property. Then you can go back to the bank, the lender and refinance based on the equity you've built up in the property. Meanwhile, you might be working away and the investment might be performing adequately, in other words, you're getting the rent, there's no great difficulty, you're paying the mortgage and so on. And then you're looking to say after, say, five years and after a capital appreciation of the assets, that's assuming that occurs, uh, you're looking to finance again and go again. And in this way, you're looking then over a period of 10, 15, perhaps 20 years, building up a portfolio of properties, portfolio of houses or apartments, or indeed even you could throw in some commercial properties as well, which will essentially pay the way. But at the end of the video, or rather the consultation, I just threw away a remark that it was a very simple business and they laughed. But if you think about it, buy to let investment is a simple business. So you buy a house and you get a tenant. I mean, it's as simple as that. Now, obviously, in buying a house, you're going to need to get finance. So you need to think about that. You need to arrange your finance. You need to be in, uh, capable of raising finance, sufficient finance. And you need, obviously, to either have some of your own capital or perhaps some savings or whatever. But essentially, the fundamental is you buy a house or an apartment. And the second leg to the simplicity of the strategy, the simplicity of buy to that investment is you get a tenant and then out of that, there's the nuance of getting a good tenant. So you basically take great care to take up references and carry out a bit of research as best you can on the proposed tenant and um, do your best, obviously, to ascertain that they're going to be a good tenant and that they have a good track record and so on. You are entitled to look for and take up references from a previous landlord. And that's essentially buy to let investment, residential buy to let investment. You buy a property and you let it to a half decent tenant. Then you need obviously to manage it. Now you can appoint a letting agent or engage the services of a letting agent. A lot of estate agents, for example, provide the service of managing properties and they look after them. They might organize the tradesmen that might be required from time to time to carry out some repairs. They might have a maintenance man handy on their books and they will organize the collection of deposits and they'll organize the collection of the rent and so on and so forth. So you can do that or you can look after it yourself. And you will have the hassle obviously of getting repairs carried out and collecting the rent yourself and so on and so forth. But again, you're gonna save a few bob by doing that yourself. If you pay an estate agent or an auctioneer or a letting agent, obviously there's a cost involved there, but obviously they have a good degree of experience in the area as well. So that's something that you need to consider. You need obviously to factor in your own time and the effort that you may or may not be prepared to make. In other words, in the first instance, early on, you might be happy enough and very, very enthusiastic to carry out repairs and meet the tenant and collect the rent and so on and so forth. But after a while, it might become wearing when you get a call on a Saturday night or a Friday night or a Saturday morning early that there's a bulb gone in the bathroom or that, that there's a fuse gone or that the fridge is after breaking down or that the oven is uh, on the fritz, or that the uh, dry cleaner, the uh, dishwasher is not working, or the spin dryer, or something of that nature, then the enthusiasm may dissipate to a certain extent. But essentially the point that I'm making is that buy-to-let investment, buy-to-let property investment is a straightforward, relatively simple game. You buy a house and you get a tenant. Um, because I've been involved in other businesses as well. I've been involved in retailing and convenience stores and petrol stations and pubs and construction and so on. And quite frankly, 
there's a lot of moving parts in a lot of those businesses. Whereas compared to those businesses, property buy to let investment is straightforward. Now you need to consider it. You need to consider it carefully. You need to consider that properties, the value, the capital appreciation or depreciation is unpredictable. They may rise in value, they may not. And if your whole plan is predicated on a rise in capital values over a period of time, you need to consider that we did have a property crash here about 10 years ago in Ireland. So that's something that you need to factor in. Um, but obviously you need to think about the pros and cons, but essentially at its essence, buy to let investment is straightforward. You buy a, say a residential property and you get a half decent tenant and you manage it. Hope you find this video useful. If you do, I would appreciate if you gave it the thumbs up down below. Thank you.